This is part four of our Mocha Pro and Fusion compositing workflow series, and I'm Ben Brownlee for Boris Effects. We've come quite far with our shop, transforming it from this overcast day to a more aesthetic sunset. And I want to smooth out the bumpy camera work now. And I'm going to use Mocha Pro's stabilized module to let me art direct that. So let's take a look. So this next part is all about how we're going to stabilize this up a little bit. So if we take a look, um, let's take a look actually at the original footage. It's probably easier to see it on here. If we play this through, you'll see that the pan that was created wasn't exactly the smoothest camera movement in the world. You can see there's a few little areas where it goes fast, then slow, then fast, then slow, fast, then slow. I want to smooth out those movements, and we can do that very easily using Mocha Pro and the Stabilize module. So let's come back into our Mocha Pro project. All right, so back in Mocha Pro, remember we already have our tracking data that we created right at the beginning. We're going to recycle this one more time. I'll press the asterisk on the number pad just to zoom to fit again. And with my background track selected, I'm going to come into the Stabilize module. And I'm not going to do anything else. I'm just going to play through this clip. And you'll see, because I had my background track selected when I came into the Stabilize module, it's got the cog turned on, which means that this is the layer that is being processed out for stabilization. As we play it through, it's doing a very, really good job, actually, of smoothing out that motion. At the default settings, it's smoothing it out across 10 frames and only smoothing the X and Y translation. So only smoothing out position, which is exactly what we want. But as it moves through, we're getting these big, big black borders. That's, that's not great. That's not exactly what we're after. One of the things I can do in my stabilized module is set up the frame list. So if I add plus on the frame list here, this is going to set the frames where I want this area to be at full screen. So if I come all the way to the end as well, add the end frame to my frame list, this is going to also be at full screen. Now, if I play this through, what I've got is I've got a combination of the smoothed out tracking data plus the interpolation of the frame list going from the first frame to the last frame. So if we take a look at the edges now. You can see I, I am actually still stabilizing out that nasty little movement. So I am still getting some, some sort of black edges here. So you can see it stabilizing it out but we're still maintaining that main camera movement. And that's all I really want to do with this shot, I think. I don't want to get it much smoother than this. And if you'd like to learn more about the Stabilize module, check out the Mocha Essentials course. There's a whole section about the Stabilize module. But I'm just going to use this Stabilize data here. So I'm going to export out Stabilize tracking data and copy this to the clipboard, just as we've done previously. Let's save this out, exit out of Mocha Pro. And back in Fusion, I'll make sure I have nothing selected and then just paste in my tracking data again. And just as before, we'll get rid of this loader that is automatically brought in and we'll just hook this up at the end of our lens flare. I'll just rename this tracker to stabilization so we know that what it's doing. Okay, and let's come into the operations. And again, we have the choice of either going match move or corner positioning. And when it comes to stabilization data taken out of Mocha Pro, I'll generally use corner positioning because this better maintains the look that I established in Mocha Pro. But what else do we have to feed into this tracker node? Because if I just play this back now, you can see that the, uh, the tracker itself is changing position, sort of shaking about a little bit. There is some, some movement in there. There are keyframes in there, but we're not seeing the rendered result. And that's because we've only hooked up the input into the tracker node. I'm going to take another connection out from the lens flare and put that over the top onto our foreground. 
And now if we play this through, we are going to have a more stabilized result. Let's see if we can see the difference. Under Merge, if I show the background only, this is the original layer. If I show foreground only, this is our stabilized layer. Background only, unstabilized, foreground only, stabilized. If I click off of the tracker, you'll be able to see that there's a little bit of a gap now on our edges because we have stabilized this out. If we were just using the stabilized render module in Mocha Pro, then we could automatically fix how those edges are, are changed up in Mocha Pro and that would render out correctly. But because we're just using a Fusion Tracker node, I'm going to manually change this. So Shift Space, type in Transform. So I'm just going to make sure that I'm previewing that and then come in and scale this up. I'm going to scale it up as little as I need to. And let's see how that's looking. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. It's a bit more stable. It's taken, taken out those big jolts that we were getting previously. We've got a much smoother, yet still natural looking result. Yeah, I think the difference is clear there. And that's it. It really is that simple to use Mocha stabilized data within Fusion. Simply set everything up in the stabilized module, export out that stabilized data to the Fusion format, copy it to the clipboard, and paste it into Fusion. The only big gotcha that you'll find is remembering to connect both the foreground and the background to the same tracker node before you go in and set the operation to how you need it. We've seen how we can take one main track and then recycle that data time and time again to do the sky replacement, to help create our shapes for the garbage mask on the Luma key, to do the parameter tracking on the lens flare so the lens flare tracks in correctly, and to do the stabilization across the whole image. All of that was done with one piece of tracking data from Mocha Pro used in different ways. And I've said it before, and I will keep saying it, that really is one of the, the big strengths about working with Mocha Pro. You track once, you use many times. My name is Ben Brownlee for Boris Effects, and I will see you again soon. Head on over to the training section of BorisFX.com and you'll find Mocha Essentials, which is a free training series to get you started on all the ins and outs of Mocha Pro. If you'd like to see more training for Mocha Pro and Fusion, then please let us know in the comments below. If you've got any suggestions for the type of project you'd like to see, then tell me down there as well. For a free trial of Mocha Pro and all of the Boris Effects lineup, head on over to BorisEffects.com.